If you have around $600 to spend, should you buy a 4070 Super or 7800 XT? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt and welcome back to Blackbird PC Tech and our next video in our Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship series. This series is focused on helping you make the tough choices when building your dream PC. Choices like, should I buy a CPU X or CPU Y? Should I buy a GPU X or GPU Y? Should I use an air cooler or AIO? These are all profound life-changing questions that we take very seriously here at Blackbird PC Tech. In this series, we are going to help you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on two popular mid-range GPUs with the power color Red Devil Radeon RX 7800 XT in the red corner, taking on the ASUS Dual GeForce RTX 4070 Super OC in the blue corner. Before the battle gets started, I wanted to talk a little about graphics card brands. A question I see a lot is, does GPU brand matter? The simple answer is yes, but it really depends on what you prioritize most. Nvidia, AMD and Intel partner with third-party companies or add-in board partners to produce graphics cards. While the GPU chip itself is basically the same for each card of the same model regardless of brand, they are tested and binned differently, which can impact reliability, the quality of the board components used can be different, and the cooling solutions offered are different. To complicate things more, the GPU chip manufacturers sell their own branded graphics cards Cards, with NVIDIA producing Founders Edition cards, AMD producing sold by AMD baseline models, and Intel producing limited edition cards. Furthermore, AIB partners typically develop product tiers for each GPU model. For example, ASUS offers multiple variants of the RTX 4080, such as a high-end Strix card, a Tough card, a Slimline Pro Art card, and even a variant designed with Noctua. This can make it challenging to select a graphics card, so the question of whether one is better than another usually comes down to cost, performance, and customer support. For NVIDIA GPUs, the primary AIB partners include ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, Zotac, PNY, Galax, Gainwood, Palette, Colorful, and Inno3D. For AMD, the primary AIB partners include Sapphire, PowerColor, XFX, ASRock, ASUS, Gigabyte, MSI, and Acer. And for Intel GPUs, the primary AIB partners include ASRock, Sparkle, and Acer. As you can see, some partners manufacture graphics cards for multiple chipset manufacturers, with ASUS, MSI, and Gigabyte making both NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, while ASRock and Acer make both AMD and Intel GPUs. Some of these partners are focused in different regions of the world as well. So companies like Gainwood, Galax, and Inno3D are big in Europe, but don't have a large presence in the US. Even with EVGA leaving the GPU market, there are a lot of options to choose from for each chip. So if you are planning to buy a new GPU from Nvidia, AMD or Intel, which brand should you get? Let's answer that later in the video. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between two popular mid-range GPUs with the power color Red Devil Radeon RX 7800 XT in the red corner, taking on the ASUS Dual GeForce RTX 4070 Super Overclock in the blue corner. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD based open bench table with the following components. For the CPU we have an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. For the motherboard we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For RAM we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB DDR5 6000 CL30 kit. For storage we have two 2TB WD Black SN850X NVMe SSDs. For the CPU cooler we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. And for the PSU we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200PM 1200W Platinum Power Supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed at default out of the box GPU settings. I select selected these settings to avoid any issue with Silicon Lottery, given that these settings should run stable on virtually all 7800XT and 4070 Super GPUs. Given that these are mid-range GPUs, I also limited testing to resolutions of 1080p and 1440p, since 4K will not run above 60Hz in most games at ultra settings. With the GPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks, but before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now... It's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy! In the blue corner, we have the champion! In the red corner, we have the challenger! Who will win this battle royale? 
Stay tuned to find out. Remember how I asked the question earlier in the video, who is the best AIB partner for each GPU chipset manufacturer? There is no definitive answer that everyone will agree upon because as I mentioned earlier, it depends on how you prioritize cost, performance, and customer support. If cost is your primary attribute, then it's hard to go past solutions direct from the GPU manufacturers because they will always be priced at MSRP and therefore they usually represent the best value. If performance is your primary attribute, then for Nvidia, I would currently select ASUS with MSRP as my second choice and for AMD I would select Sapphire with Power Color as my second choice. For best customer support I honestly don't have a go-to best company after EVGA left the market. I try to focus on quality and performance and hope that I don't have to deal directly with AIB partners if something goes wrong because they all kind of suck. The card you select really comes down to personal preference and your individual experience with a brand. Aesthetics is also something that's worth considering. Does the GPU design match your build style? For example, I really like the shape of the Zotac 4000 series cards, even though it's not a brand that I typically buy. There are many other things to consider, such as availability and compatibility with your case, so I wouldn't be too concerned about brand, as long as your card provides a great gaming experience. In this video, we pitted two popular mid-range GPUs against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious, with the Power Color Red Devil Radeon RX 7800 XT in the red corner, taking on the ASUS Dual GeForce RTX 4070 Super OC in the blue corner. As you can see from the round by round results, it was a decisive victory for Team Blue, with 16 victories and only 3 losses across 20 rounds. When you look at the average performance across 14 games, the FPS advantage for the 4070 Super is around 9%, which is a meaningful difference and represents a clear advantage for the 4070 Super. When we look at power efficiency, this advantage extends with the 4070 Super effectively twice as efficient as the 7800 XT. One interesting thing to note is that the the ASUS Dual 4070 Super ran hotter than the Red Devil 7800 XT while drawing significantly less power. So this means the cooling solution for the Red Devil is significantly better. So if you plan to overclock a 4070 Super, then I would recommend purchasing a card with a better cooling solution. So what happens when we look at cost? The current price for both cards puts the Red Devil 7800 XT about $50 cheaper than the ASUS Dual 4070 Super. So approximately 9% difference, which is almost identical to the performance difference. If you convert these prices into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar, then the average FPS per dollar is identical with no meaningful difference. The Red Devil has a small advantage for the 1% lows, but it's obvious that Nvidia used these numbers when setting the price for the 4070 Super. I'm honestly not sure why the reception for the 4070 Super has been so poor given how well it performs. It's an easy recommendation based on these results, especially when you consider Nvidia's superior implementation of ray tracing. If I was AMD, 
the, I would recommend cutting the price of the 7800 XT by $50 to position it more favorably against the 4070 Super. It would still be $50 higher than the 7700 XT, but that card should also drop in price by about $25 to be better positioned against the 4060 Ti. Competition is a good thing, and I hope AMD continues to push aggressively, such as with their recent release of AMD Fluid Motion Frames, a driver-level frame generation implementation that should work in all games. The only reason Nvidia responded with supermodels is due to the strong competition from AMD. So let's hope it continues and that Intel can join the battle in earnest with Battle Mage in the very near future. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. Please also comment and offer suggestions on any future components that you would like to see go head to head. Bye for now.